Thanks for tuning in to Decade Learning. This week's topic is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about education because not many people discuss this topic despite it affecting everyone and it varies from culture to culture. When most people in the U.S. think of education, they think of going to school, trying to get straight A's, studying for hours, taking tests, getting a degree, and then getting a job. But what exactly is education? Well, if you look in the dictionary, Education is defined as the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction, especially at a school or university. So, most Americans have a pretty similar view to the definition, but that's not entirely accurate. Educational systems vary greatly across the globe as there is no universal system. This also means the culture surrounding education and the associations they have with it will be different. So, while we may think of it as getting a degree and getting straight A's, People in other parts of the world may have different associations. For example, students in the United Socialist Soviet Republic, USSR for short, had a completely different view. Students in the USSR did not think of earning straight A's, and while they still tried to earn them, they knew that, that their grade may change. This was a common occurrence, and even though the student earned an A, the letter grade received may be a B. We may think, well, isn't this unfair? Why didn't anyone speak up? Well, students were conditioned to believe that this was unfair to have straight A's, especially if the student were from one ethnicity, and receiving a B balanced the system out. This was implemented by the government to further the communist principles of fairness, and any attempt to speak out against this was swiftly silenced. Here are a few reasons why. 1. Education and career paths were considered family traditions. 2. Despite what the government promised, there wasn't a fair distribution of resources. But what caused this? One reason this may have occurred is that people in the USSR believed education and careers were a familial tradition, so educators were often bribed to influence these traditions. For instance, children were expected to follow in their parents' career paths and make it a familial tradition. For example, meet Joe and his dad. His dad is a doctor. Because of this, if Joe wants to become a doctor, he has a better chance of becoming one because it isn't a family tradition. Not only that, he will be expected to become one because his father is a doctor. Now meet Sally and her mom. Her mom is a teacher at a local elementary school. Now Sally would be expected to become an elementary school teacher and would have an easier time of getting admitted to the career path necessary to become one. But what if Joe wanted to become an elementary school teacher and Sally wanted to become a doctor? Well, the chances of them following a career path different from their parents was greatly reduced. But your career and education was also tied to your ethnicity. For example, meet Tristan and his dad. His dad is an engineer and they are both Jewish. Now meet Riley and her dad, who is a nurse at a local hospital. Neither of them are Jewish. Now, what if Tristan and Riley both wanted to be scientists? Who do you think has a higher chance of becoming a scientist? If you answered Riley, you are correct. This is because even though neither of the children's parents are scientists, Tristan and his dad are still Jewish. Being a part of some ethnicities, such as being ethnically Jewish, greatly reduced a person's chance of choosing a certain career path. This was due to rampant discrimination found in the USSR's educational system. But is that the only reason education is different? Another reason education is so different across the globe, particularly in the USSR, is due to varying resources. In this case, resources do, do not mean food, water, or shelter, but access to educational institutions and institutions of higher education. People in larger, more urban areas had more educational institutions than people in more rural areas. Researchers Latov and Latova found that those who lived in larger cities in the USSR, such as Moscow, had much better infrastructure for science and better ordinary living conditions. This led to an increase of specialized jobs, such as doctors, teachers, and engineers in the larger cities because the schools offered the training for these careers and were conveniently located and easily accessible to the common person. However, this created a problem for smaller, more rural parts of the country. The smaller towns had one institution of higher education if they were fortunate, which meant that students who lived in those smaller towns had less options for higher education. Because of that, there were less opportunities for different career paths to be studied and to bring more careers to these smaller towns. You might ask, well, why don't the students travel to other cities to get a better education? Things were not so simple. Most people simply could not afford pursuing their education in another city. The expenses incurred from living in a different city and going to school at the same time outweighed the benefits of pursuing an education. 
Think of it this way. In the state of Texas, there are many cities with institutions of higher learning. Let's take a look at a couple of these cities. Let's look at San Antonio first. It has 13 institutions of higher learning, which means students have more variety when it comes to choosing which school to attend. Now let's look at Laredo. It only has three institutions of higher learning, meaning there is less diversity in institutions of higher education to attend. So if students who lived in either San Antonio or Laredo wanted to stay in their hometown to attend an institution of higher learning, then those who lived in San Antonio would have access to more diverse resources for education and more institutions to choose from. But we're not done there. Our research done comparing the education systems of the USSR and USA brought more information to light. Both the USSR and the United States provided free and mandatory education for the general public. However, when taking a deeper look into their education systems, that was one of the few similarities they shared. Education in the USSR was centralized through strict government involvement in the classroom setting. Classes were made to prepare the student for a vocational, technical, or professional line of work, but also to develop Soviet social political rightness, according to Harvey R. John. They provided daycare opportunities, subject specialized secondary schools, and teaching was viewed as a prestigious career. But in the United States, as we know, things are done differently. The United States provides more opportunities for higher education, increased academic freedom, and places more of a curricular balance. The way subject specialized education works is like this. After completing grade eight, there are three options to pursue. One is essentially an equivalent to our graduation. They receive a certificate upon passing state exams. This is the most popular route. Another way is to be given some form of training in a secondary specialized school, most of which are for technical programs for three to four years. The third option is to acquire a skilled trade through vocational school. However, when taking a deeper look into the system, one would note that the USSR enforces discipline and obedience. Most citizens weren't given much opportunities to further their education after graduation. Instead, they were forced to go into careers. On the other hand, the US had focused more on academic freedom and provided more opportunities for higher education. The USSR not only focused on preparing them for their line of work, but also to instill their communist ideas. It'd be a fair assessment to state that the USSR and the US education systems are polar opposites. The USA encourages an A for all policy, where they highly encourage students to earn the highest grade possible, even if it leads to a disproportionate distribution of grades. However, in the USSR, USSR education is centered around its political needs, while the US educational structure reflects the necessities of the general public. Overall, it can be safe to say that educational systems vary greatly across the globe. It is important to realize this because not all students have the same opportunities we do. What we may take for granted, such as choosing our own careers, may be a luxury for students in other parts of the globe. By learning about other educational systems across the globe, we may have more resources and knowledge available to us to fix our own educational system and to fix the educational systems across the globe. If you would like to do your own personal research, you'll have an easy time finding a large number of credible sources, but it will be a challenge to locate articles that are relevant to the topic. Be sure to be patient and read your sources carefully. We'll see you all next week on Decade Learning. Thanks for tuning in.